Welcome to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by... Solzy. Kendall. Mock. Sheen Washable. Yep. J-Mart. That's right, J-Mart's back. We got the timing down, too, with Mock Sheen Washable. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mock Sheen yeah. Washable, by the way. He's a household appliance. J-Mart, it's, it's lovely to have you back on air after uh, yeah. a two-week hiatus. Two uh, weeks of poop and no sleep. Excellent. Here we go. Excellent. It's just like living with Kyle. That's right. Yeah. Thumbs up from Kyle over That's there. That's right. Too. <laughs> well, we will uh, start with our, uh, our starting lineups. Uh, Kendall, would you like to lead us off? I have here, from uh, watch me butcher this name, uh, Weyerbacher, Sunday Morning Stout. It's actually pronounced correctly. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was good. Uh-huh. Kendall? That's Kyle. I Kendall, here go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, what do you got? Well, I got from Double India Pale Ale. <laughs> <laughs> Probably said it wrong. Juicy Double, baby. Uh, Kyle, that's it's from Goose Island. <laughs> that's not from... It's, this is it's, why you guys love to have me on the show. <laughs> it is a double Indian pale ale. Mark? I have the Boom Citralaka from Steady Habit Brewing Company. Got yes. the Boom you Shaka Laka. You ever had that? I have not. I'm, yes, ve- have. I'm very excited for it. Uh, Jamar, I believe you have a special beer that no one on the show's ever had. I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Noggy IPA from Stev at uh, Bad Fisherman Brewing Company. For those of you who don't know, listen to our show from last week, and we featured a very local brewer, brewmaster on the show. Uh, I have the DJ Khaled special. I have <laughs> another one. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Another one. What's that? Another one <laughs> from Maine Brewing Company, IPA. So, uh, Toast to Excellence. I think we have two today. I know Mock's been itching to uh, to do itching, one. Been fiending. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, the first one we're going to give out to Aaron Judge, who just broke the rookie home run record, beating Mark McGuire, who hit his 50th home run. Was it yesterday? Yes. Career predictions finishes with 55. Yeah. His career? Spit, yeah, spit he's, <laughs> he's going down. <laughs> oh, my God. Forever. <laughs> and uh, Kyle. Oh, I'm doing this now? Yeah. Um, no, I'll do it. Jake Elliott, the kicker for the rookie kicker for the Eagles, sixty-one yard game-winning field goal, uh, longest ever by a rookie. What a beaut! Was and, it really? Uh, yeah, longest oh, ever by a, longest ever field goal by a rookie. And uh, pretty sure I remember seeing his dad was in the uh, the stands home game, ball in his eyes, crying. I, I tell you, it it hurt to watch as a Giants fan, but it was kind of cool to see a rookie go out and you know earn a win. For You're his just team. kissing his ass. No, I'm serious. It, <laughs> it was cool happy. to see. Would be, I wasn't would, happy. Would it, would it be cool if he was a rookie kicker for the Cowboys? It would have been the same. No. I mean, I, I'm not happy he won, but it was cool to see like a rookie and it, you know go out <laughs> there and get a win. Kyle's, Kyle's face well, right now. T- to those two gentlemen, we toast to excellence. <laughs> I like the sound effects. That's good. <laughs> really selling it. Candle uh, on the soundboard. So we also have uh, some shots to do. Three, a trifecta of shots. Kyle and I are immune from the shots, which is fantastic. We have Kendall is doing a shot as a per agreement of getting the shot trivia most incorrect last week. We have Mock doing a special shot because his football team, his NFL team, is the only team without a win at the table now. If, if I can backtrack my last statement saying Elliot was nice, it was nice to watch him win that. Screw him because now I have to take this shot. <laughs> Forgot about that. And uh, even though it was for very probable reasons and uh, important reasons. The rules are? The rules are rules. And that's right. <laughs> J- 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 Mart missed Thanks a show. The clarity there. J- Mart missed a show, so he must do a shot. So, uh, gentlemen. All right. Uh, I can't smell it? No, you can't smell it. You have to just shoot it back. Uh, I'll give you, a, I'll give you the name I'll give you the name yeah. first. It's called the League of Nations. I, I can't oh. reach you, so I'll oh, let you guys, <laughs> you guys take care of that. There we go. Come on. Knock them back. Go. It's a very dark brown color. Very nice and rich. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, That's very sweet. Yeah, Mach Mach Sheen to washable does not seem to have uh, positive things to say about it. Yeah, (laughs) it tastes like got more in that cup, right? Yeah, I got I got more. Have you ever just eaten like all the Skittles at once? (laughs) (laughs) Like you just take all you take. Kyle's so intrigued. He's actually going to take. I tell you what. I tell you what. At first, he smelt it and he changed his mind. Like, no, Kyle, Kyle, try it. I think Seriously, you're try it. Your you mouth, see, that's where you're take, in trouble. Take a sip. Look at the floater that is hanging around in this thing. Just take a little sip. I'm gonna throw up. Yeah, you, won't. you won't. No, it, it's like it was sweet. It's good. And it had like a coffee undertone. <laughs> <laughs> you were such a bummer. <laughs> but but wait for the aftertaste. Is there what? Is there any sort of coffee? Uh, is it the coffee bourbon? Yeah, the no, it was a uh, <laughs> Litchfield rather. It was the uh, the League of Nations. It experienced from Mexico, Kahlua, oh, no. from the Caribbean, uh, banana rum. 
I already from, feel my stomach curdling. From right France, cognac. Wow. It gets better. From Brazil, sweetened lime juice. And from That's France, where that French is mustard. From France, <laughs> and from Toledo, Ohio, <laughs> French is mustard. <laughs> Finally, last, last but not least, my favorite, from Russia, Luxusova vodka. Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I like that again. Yeah, I didn't think well, it was that We bad. got that cup over there. I, it was very intimidating. Though. Dark. Mm, it smelled terrible. We could probably uh, pour up again. <laughs> no, right. Right. Well, before we dig into the whole discussion today, I'm going to go over our week three picks. <laughs> All right. Moving Kendall right along. Shot. Kendall has to do a shot uh, trivia. Yeah, moving before that. No, no. We, we will forget if we don't do this now. No, we won't. Okay, Kendall, go ahead. Kendall, do your All trivia. Right. So hopefully you guys don't know this. So I'm going to spill the beans a little bit. Uh, this is an, an NBA show that we're doing here. No, there goes so, uh, We might so, as well just cut the tape here. So I have here a question. Hopefully that it's not like a very easy one. Um, All right. So... Michael Williams of the Minnesota Timberwolves has hit this many NBA record uh, free throws. How many? Like for a career? Just a, he, he holds the record for free throws made in a row. Oh, in, in, a row? Like, in a season, like tracked, you know. Oh, not without, just like so doing, without missing. Yeah, not doing it for like Guinness, you know, world records. Just, you know. Oh, I got excited. I thought we were having Isn't Guinness. Michael Williams? Uh, Michael Williams, yes. 62. Um, 117. 163. Now I'm starting to get 100 about my guess. Okay, the correct answer is 97. Soulsy. <laughs> so, Souls, you have the option of doing a discussing shot next show and doing the shot now. Do you have to do both? No. All right, so you have to do a double <laughs> discussing shot next show. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. That was a good one. See, that one's, that one's tough because, like, you think, like, these NBA players, or you think of people like Ray Allen and Ben yeah. Gordon, like, 100 free throws consecutive without missing throughout a season doesn't seem hard for them. But... Mike Williams, it's the best. Michael Williams, uh, Timberwolves. I feel like we're forgetting something. Oh, Kyle, yeah. could you do our um, <laughs> our weekly pickums? <laughs> so moving on. No. None of us did well this week. Rough week. Actually, Rough week. Stev, 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 Stev went eight and eight. That was the best record of the week. The guy who doesn't really watch football. <laughs> uh, Paul had went five and eleven. That's right. But the most important win was I finally got the Bears pick right. <laughs> Jeff and I went six and ten. And Mock and Kendall both went seven and nine. The only thing that changes is Mock's in first and Paul's in second by a game. Still uh, bringing up the rear. Yeah, right? Jeff's here in dead last. <laughs> At least I, I have the edge on Stev. But he has games, more career right? wins than Stev. Yeah, I'll give you that one. But he's, Stev he's has coming won. for you. <laughs> Stev's only done it for one week. <laughs> no, it <actually>. doesn't matter. <laughs> we had, we just gave Stev that sixteen of the same week football. sheets <laughs> just to fill them out. So as long as there's division matchups going on, he's good. Well, he's good. This beer is good. We'll whoa. get into that later, though. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Kendall, you spilled the beans. I did. I it's did. Uh, an NBA show. Uh, before we delve into the, the world of the NBA, uh, off-season signings, predictions, and whatnot, our own Machine Washable, previous to this day, not an, a fan of any precise NBA team, is now a fan of a specific team. Kai, would you like to give us the rundown on how his team was picked? So, I, of course, bought NBA 2K. And so we decided we're going to fantasy draft an NBA team because we all know that the Warriors and the Spurs were going to win. So we did a fantasy draft, and whoever team won was going to be Moxie and Washable's favorite team. And for the record, we all took guesses who we thought it was going to be. I got it right. Paul did nail it. So, Mike, would you like to announce to the world who your favorite team is? I am now Drum roll, the please. number one fan. Of the New Orleans Pelicans. I wish he said it wrong so bad. <laughs> I'm a fan of the Utah Pelicans. <laughs> uh, there you go. You're go Pelicans. A, you're a fan of the brow. That's it. Do you know what that means? Yes. The brow and the boogie. I actually, I actually do. <laughs> yeah, so, the, right, the, bo- the boogie brow. Ooh, the boogie brow. That could be the new name for the wavy team. eyebrows well, the girls thing. are wearing. Uh, it's a fun looking, team. When I was looking to buy a t-shirt on eBay immediately after I became a fan, there was Talking a lot of shirts that said... <laughs> Like the brow and the boogie, and a lot of shirts already out on the market with that. So now, now that you're a fan of the Pelicans, do you, why don't you start off our NBA discussion? Why don't, what, what, what do you what do you think is going to be the most pivotal position outside of the uh, you know power forward center positions? What do you, what do you think the point guard situation is going forward? Well, they got to get rid of them all. Shooting guards, <laughs> only shooting guards. So so Mark still has a little bit to learn. But that that'll come with with watching. I'll give you a little. Advice, your point guard, your third best player. That's coming from a Sixers yeah. fan. Keep he was a Sixers. Shooting guards. Only shooting guards. 
Mark named only, Drew Holiday. Mark only believes in passing and shooting. Pretty much That's the it, only yeah. thing you can do on offense. That's it. And uh, cheap shots to the gut on rebounds. Keep that ball moving. <laughs> well, you're going to be a big fan of DeMarcus then. Hey, the dirtier the better. Then uh, that fits the bill. So, a lot of NBA stuff's been happening recently. I've had some movement of players, you know, last minute signings. I know one specific movement has hit home at this table pretty hard. So, we might as well just lead off with that. The biggest news in NBA over the past few days. Jmart, do you care to break your heart on? Yeah, I mean, the Mecca Okafor is back on the <laughs> series. <laughs> No. You stole my thunder. <laughs> Get it? Um, oh, oh, wow. Ooh. Um, Shots the, fired. Uh, private nice. stock, both of you. <laughs> Jab right to the wow. throat there. Well, let me take go. a sip of this real let's quick. Go. You know, by the way, this is the end of the private stock. This is the... <laughs> it's good reason for it. Yeah, he stole my thunder. Well, actually, right here. I, uh, I believe a new batch was just whipped up. It's actually downstairs it, as we speak. It private looks stock worse than ever. Well, actually, that private stock is going to be... um. It's going to be microwaved before each <laughs> oh show. Oh, my God. Get it nice so and be a hot. Nice hot one. Well, it's dangerous, too, because so, this was in a clear bottle. And that one's in a dark bottle. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> now that you guys have fired shots back and forth, why don't you go ahead and, and break your heart on uh, on the air? Yeah, I mean, the only guy that could hit a game winner against the Sixers is now a, a Thunder. Carmelo Anthony traded. We knew it was going to happen. I just... As a fan, didn't want to believe it. He's didn't been my favorite see player. that team coming. Did out. not see Oklahoma City. I know he opened up to different teams. There's talks about maybe joining Damian Lillard too. But um, I mean, I like the move on both sides. If I'm not being biased, we as much as I can sit here and say Ennis Cantor is garbage, he's okay. And him and Porzingis will be good together. Neither of them can really speak English. Exactly. They could kind of just broken speech back and forth. But it's going to be really interesting seeing like a lack of communications because of like two different non-English languages. Well, three, because the point that they just drafted this year is from France. Yeah, so. yeah. You're also French, Kyle. I mean, they whatever. They don't need <laughs> to communicate. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, I like it because it also helps Carmelo out. You know, he's on a team where he's going to pair with Paul George and Russell Westbrook. I mean, should have went to the Pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been interesting, too. <laughs> he's going to slide into the four and... He's a good scorer still. Him and Westbrook and George, that's that's a lot of points a game there. Yeah. I mean, my heart wasn't broken nearly as much, but it was. I've always been a big Dwayne Wade fan, uh, being yeah. being a fan of the Chicago teams. I mean, it was inevitable. I mean, once Butler was gone, there really wasn't a rebuild mode, so yeah. Yeah, not, he's really, not, not really worth hanging on to the uh, a shooting guard on the wrong side Just of 30. Thankfully, he didn't have a no-trade clause and do right. all the crap we had to. And we all but, know shooting guard is the most important position out there <laughs> it was it was tough because shoot shoot. being a fan of chicago and being a fan of Dwayne wade it was so perfect when when it finally meshed up so that's like and the mellow thing just Same kind of thing. watching it like he came fall home. apart after one year yeah it just i mean injury bug wrong coaching but he's now a uh, member of the cleveland cavaliers him and him and bron bron i'm gonna call him from now on someone calls him that who calls him that my sister oh all right she well, was, uh, she was one of those Kyle throwing the private Miami Heat you. people. Yeah, the, when they the came fan about, LeBron, and yeah. she could only name like LeBron. Brush, LeBron. <laughs> I don't even know if she knew who Wade was. I mean, these are two huge moves that uh, really shake things up a bit. I mean, Cleveland was already stacked after the the Boston trades. Yeah, um, this just adds depth and experience and gives LeBron just another weapon that is you know he's chemistry well with. I'm sake, the chemistry should already be there. But I mean, played together. You know, for the first time in at least a few years, we have actually a decent amount of teams stacked up to actually make a run at something. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's been an arms race all off season. The yeah, I mean, loading up to try to take down the snaky Durant and company over there in Golden State. Well, I want to go back to the trade. Yeah, so they got Cantor, they got McDermott. I think the Knicks should have. They also got a pick. They got uh, a second round. Pick. A second round from Chicago. Either way, they should have went for the first round pick. I'm not going to sit you don't here just, and tell they, you that. They, they could have went Essentially, for you have to settle if you're the Knicks here. They've, it's not like they hadn't tried countless times to trade Melo. It's just, you're going to give up your superstar, you know. But he, he is aging. Yeah. And he has shown But his those weaknesses. two players don't reach the caliber of Carmelo. Just remember, though, you have, you have one half of the McBucket team. Yeah, that's true. The, the Bulls were at their average best. When it was Jimmy G buckets, the G stands for gets, and Dougie D buckets, the D stands for dick. And now you've got 
Dougie Dick buckets on your team. <laughs> that's that's that, what we that, needed. The question I have for you, Jeff: How does this affect Porzingis? It it's good in the sense that now Porzingis can now grow. He's the guy. I mean, he was mentored by Melo, which is a good thing. Now he can grow and be Melo in a sense. He can be the guy in New York. And it, like you just said, sure, we just gave up Carmelo Anthony for Ennis Cantor and Doug McDermott. Yeah, that sounds bad, but it's a rebuild. That's $25 million off the table, and we could build around our young core. I think a big thing, too, for Porzingis versus, like, if he were to do this 10 years ago, is Porzingis is, you know, he's part of the new breed of power forward yeah. players where he's so versatile, where he, it's lucky you know like he is able to perform well in multiple areas offensively, whether it's the mid-range game, the three-point shooting. He can pass for a big man. You know, he can play the post. So if he's off in one aspect, he can fall back on other aspects of the game. Yeah. Whereas if this if this something like this were to happen to the Knicks 10, 15 years ago, you know, and you have a, a rookie power forward that's a sensation but is only good in the post because they didn't really shoot threes that well back then, it might not have worked out. Yeah. Well, for Brazilians, he's not the go-to guy. He's, you know, the face of the Knicks. So, I mean, he's the guy now. I mean, it's a lot of pressure for him, being the yeah. guy. It is, but if anyone's going to face that, I mean, look what he, I myself was pissed when he got drafted. He went through all that and just kept getting better. What makes sense to me is if the Knicks put him in the five spot to drag the centers out of the paint and have Cantor be the four, because that's what they wanted to do last year. It's just they couldn't, you yeah. know? Didn't have the guy Either to do way, so. I see what you mean there. I think I, I think Hernan Gomez too is going to take a the next leap too. I think he's slept on a lot. I think personally, I mean, like the Mellow thing, like you said, was inevitable. I think the bigger offseason thing, I think what hurts Porzingis more than Mellow leaving because obviously Mellow contributed points and attention defensively, but I think the departure of Rose hurts Porzingis more mm. because now he doesn't have a reliable point guard that is going to be able to like get in the ball or or drive the lane and grab attention and kick it back out. Because, I mean, Melo's driving days have kind of come to an end. He's yeah. he's more of a one-on-one, you know, you know, back him down type of player. But I think I think if Rose was still there, I think there's almost no pressure on Porzingis. I think Porzingis still does really well. And I think it's the real the pressure's on everybody else, the whole supporting right. cast. Well, Maybe they should trade him to the Pelicans. <laughs> what, with being said, though, the... Porzingis for uh, Anthony Davis and Boogie? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I, I'd Only if he moves okay to shooting that. guard. <laughs> that sounds fair to me. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put Boogie at shooting guard. He's got a mean three ball. Yeah. So, and a mean right hook. does too now. I think. Like, yeah. Kyle, you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, <laughs> so if I'm the Knicks, which you, you are. you got to realize that his numbers are going to drop a little bit. Everyone's focus is going to be on Porzingis now. You don't know that at all. Yeah, I do. He was playing limited minutes for most of the season last year. Yeah, but now he's going to definitely the, not play. Limited he's a minutes. go-to scorer. He's going to be covered by the best. My thing is, I think his his numbers may drop a little bit, but I don't think he's in much trouble again as he would have been in ten to fifteen years ago. No, I'm just like the field goal percentage is going to be there. It's just I don't think the points per game. Well, see, I, how I, do you figure though? Like even if they do drop, though, I think it's like slight. I think it's like by two points at most because the thing is, like we had the we talked about earlier the ten to fifteen years ago aspect. Power forwards these days are more offensive minded and not defensive minded. So realistically, he's either going to have to be guarded most times by a really good defensive minded three who's going to be very undersized, or a you know oversized defensive center who doesn't have the speed. So I don't. I mean, he may take a dip only because he's the most reliable scoring option, but. Defensively, you know, because we talked about he's the unicorn, he's so versatile. Anybody you put on him, I mean, there's there's only a handful of guys in the league that could probably play him in all aspects of his game. Yeah, but like they're gonna they're gonna make the supporting <clears throat> cast around him nice. That's that's a thing now, I guess. We're gonna... <laughs> yeah, I would like to really just open up on that. They're gonna make the supporting cast around him score while they take him away. Yeah, I could see no. it. I mean, we'll, we'll, we won't know until it happens. Obviously, but... he bulked up over the off season. He worked so hard during the offseason. You're going to see him at the stripe more, and you're going to eat those words. Well, let's talk about the flip side of the trade. We'll the Thunder. What does this mean for the Thunder? I mean, obviously... High-powered offense. I say, obviously, it means more likely contention in in the, the West, which is much needed given, you know, the, the Rockets got stronger. The Clippers are still going to be a bit of an issue. The Warriors are a force to be reckoned with. The Pelicans have nine shooting guards. 
the really Spurs. Cute. But the uh, if I can real quick, the, the question I have because you guys know way more about basketball than Kendall and I. Oh, we're talking about, I thought we were talking about yourself. cricket. <laughs> well, will having Mello and Westbrook on the same team work? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it now, whether it's a favorite opinion or not, by the table, by the viewers, the listeners, whoever. At this point in time, the Oklahoma City Thunder have the most high powered offense in the NBA. Bar none. Yeah. Nobody in the, nobody agree. nobody in the NBA can compete with them in terms of offensive power. And then you throw their center Adams and Roberson, two guys that are great defensively. They don't need to score. You got three elite scorers. You and can't double team all of them. This is the reason I say it. Paul George, I mean, forget Paul George and Carmelo Anthony. Westbrook pretty much alone made them, what were they, the sixth seed last year? Yeah, yeah for real. A, a team that literally had no business being even in playoff discussion, let oh, alone yeah. making it. Made him a sixth seed. Now you add Paul George, someone who can play defense. He can rebound. He's, you know, above average in size for his position. He's very athletic. Now you add Carmelo Anthony, the the best one on one player in basketball, in my opinion. I mean, there's and you think he's not going to draw the doubles with it, Westbrook and George up there. He's going to get one. They can't afford to double. And I, I don't say one on one in terms of like you know like he doesn't you know Steph Curry can outhandle him. That's not but. Uh, in a one-on-one situation, it doesn't matter who's contesting his shot. It's it's the high percentage shot. It's more likely to go in than not. He, he it's smart back down. It's you know it's the fadeaway when it needs to be. It's the it's the post inside when it needs to be. Carmelo Anthony is probably the best one-on-one player in basketball at this point in time, and they all have the ability to take over, but none of them do. Westbrook had to, but when he, Westbrook was with Durant, Westbrook wasn't. This triple double machine. I mean, he's still posting great numbers. He's the most athletically freaked person ever. Plus, if you put the hoodie on Mello, it's it's game over right there. Yeah, but unfortunately, the NBA just adopted the NFL rules now. If you're wearing a hoodie, you're allowed to be tackled by the hood. <laughs> um, but I can't see. I mean, they will get outscored obviously at times, but I think that they have the most high powered offense because Paul George loved to distribute the basketball when he was in Indiana. He loved to get other players on the same page. There was times when Carmelo Anthony liked to take over the game in New York, but also... Now he doesn't have to as much. Right, he doesn't have right. to. That, that was where my question came from, because, I mean, I didn't watch too much basketball, but from what I saw, Melo didn't like to pass, and neither did Westbrook. He had no one so, to pass. So it was two Mel- guys that liked to have the it. ball in their hands. Melo didn't have to when Westbrook didn't have an option. And so the real, the real kicker, why I say they're the most high-powered offense, and I think Kyle might agree with me a little bit on this, is this season actually gives the Thunder to do something they haven't had the option to do recently, and that's let Steven Adams play his brand of basketball. Steven Adams was absolutely useless last year because all he was all he did was set picks for Westbrook and rebound that's, and play defense. Steven Adams can score the basketball. Steven Adams is very easily a 2010 guy. And now that he has an actual slew of players that are consistent from the perimeter, can drive, Adams can hit the mid-range, it gives Adams the ability to pop out and hit that 18-foot jumper. Yeah, it gives Singler them, and Ajinsa on the bench, too, that are going to spread the floor. They, what, 40% three points? And they're, they're deep. Kyle, let me to cut you. I know you're really itching to get in on this. Yeah, I know. I disagree with the deep part, but go ahead. I think they're pretty deep. I, I, don't, I don't mean they're deep in terms of, like, they have enough guys that are going to go out and give them 18 points a game, but their bench play, I feel like their bench is going to be able to come in and give more if they were to play the Thunder in a seven game series, the Thunder might win the series, but the the or the Warriors might win the series, but the Thunder's bench is gonna outperform. I disagree. I don't. The Warriors re signed, you know, Sean Livingston. They got Andre Godala back. They got Swaggy P. But Andre Godala's a starter. No, he's not. He's gonna be a starter this year, no, I thought. Not. Were they starting McGee? Yeah, he's gonna start the five. Oh, or man. Zaza. No no not, not everyone knows who Swaggy Pete is. Nick Who's Young. It? Swaggy Pete. <laughs> Swaggy Pete. <laughs> but there's old pistol. The only thing that bothered me about this trade <laughs> is that the Thunder gave up their most reliable bench player in Kane Three. When he came into the game, you got a superstar. I get that. I get that. Palace. I'm talking about the other side of it. I get I get what you're saying. But if you were to put after like a full like ten minutes of playing in the first quarter, I personally feel from all the basketball I've watched over the past few years. The Thunder or the the Warriors are deep, but they're deep in the sense that they have so many superstars that they don't need to play a bench. 
they just plug in two guys and keep three starters out exactly. there. Exactly. And they cycle through. If exactly. you had to play bench versus bench, That's I think the, the Thunder, Thunder outperform. They, one of those guys, Westbrook, Georgia, Anthony, they'll be on the court. No, I know. I just times. I don't trust Raymond Fowler and Abiranus to get the job done. When they, it comes down, they just got to play a role, really. But I, the, I get it. They're on paper. You're not like, oh wow, like that's a good bench. Like they're gonna run with people, but okay, they don't have. To. OKC is more dangerous than people think, simply for because when you look at who they have to play in the West, it's Golden State. If they meet, if they, you know, if they reach the finals, nine times out of ten, you're gonna think it's Golden State. The one outlier is gonna be San Antonio. But even if it's San Antonio, Steph Curry can play defense. There's no denying it, and so can Kevin Durant. However, Kevin Durant and Paul George pretty much cancel each other out. They're very similar players. George is just a little bigger in terms of of meat. Westbrook can have his way with Curry. Curry can, you know, have his way with Westbrook. I don't think, especially at the four, I think Carmelo Anthony can give Draymond Green a lot of trouble. Because Draymond Green tire each Dray- other out. Draymond Green is the type of well, see, I don't think so. That's the thing. I think Draymond Green tires himself out. Draymond Green's the type of player who he thrives off of chasing people around the paint, and Melo's not the guy who runs around. Melo's the guy who sits in the corner or sits up at the perimeter. He runs the play, he gets the ball, and he isolates. He'll just kick him in the nuts. That's, That's what he's true. good at. Melo doesn't have nuts though. Well, he does, but they're made of bronze. <laughs> well, back before before when you were talking about Steven Adams, he is the most important player to that team, I believe. Because he, when that team runs, he's going to be down the court. He's going to be down there before Melo and Paul George because he's already going to. Yeah, Melo is a little. Because there's going to be a lot of long solo. rebounds for the Thunder this year. Is that the guy with the no. mustache? Yeah, 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 and the long hair. So. And the tattoos all he, over his left once arm. Once he runs down the court, he's going to finish every time because he's going to be the only one down there. And, well, the other thing, too, we talked about, I personally think if, if I'm Oklahoma City, I stick with what you said. Melo's going to slot into the four, and we're going to play you know Westbrook at the one, George at the three, Melo at the four. When we play the Warriors, if I'm the Thunder, I'm thinking George is the four. That's what I'm I was pu- thinking. I'm too. putting George at the four, and my reasoning because is you have George at the four. Yes, Draymond's going to be able to cover him. You know, he's going to make his day a little more miserable. But then you have either Zaza or McGee on Adams, and any switch that happens, Adams can outpower both those centers. But if there's a switch that happens, and Paul George is on Zaza Pachulia all day. All day, oh, yeah. Paul George is going to average sixty points a game if he's covered by Zaza. And Roberson's going to hold Clay Thompson. Roberson's not that great, but he's great defensively. And that's no, I know, but Patrick Beverly type player. Yes, you know he's not. He, he's I think on your he's team. Strong. To play. He's stronger than people give him credit for. He's on your. He's on your team to play defense. I mean, that's that's his role. You know, he'll take the, away Clay's three. I'm not saying he's going to shut down Clay, but he'll take that three ball away at least. It's interesting. You just have to play smart. It's interesting. The only I can't wait for this season. I've never really been that excited. It's, it's weird because my favorite player got traded, but I'm looking forward to all these new teams. Essentially, in the way I look at it, both teams really match up well defensively, offensively. The only advantage I see Golden State having is if there's some sort sort of switch mishap. If Melo is forced to cover Clay, I I think Clay can expose Melo because of Melo's lack of speed with his age. Because Clay still, you know, Clay is a driver. Uh, it, it, it's interesting, you know, and the thing now is the Thunder went from being a team that we said had no business even talking about playoffs to having more formidable weapons than San Antonio. The the, the real question is going to be, are the defensively minded enough? And, you know, the thing is, I, I think they are. I think, I think Melo kind of, I think Melo is forced to play defense at this point now. He's with younger, I think he, more athletic players. I think he's going to take a step in defense just because, I mean, even the interviews, it sounds cliche, but he seemed, like, happy. He seemed motivated. I mean, he's been dealing with so much crap in New York. He's got a, a team that could take him there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he could step up defensively, and we'll see. He's got That's something it. to play for. Melo might be able to benefit, too, that he's not going to be the number one superstar. There. Exactly. You know, in New York, it was it was backup. him. He's needed those players around him for he, his whole he's career. He's going to have other players to like lean on almost to kind of take some of that off of him. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's the point I was going to make real quick before we get into the other signings. Is it's it's a more aggressive approach to pretty much what you say. But if I'm the coaching staff for the Thunder, you know, I'm looking at what I have around me. If I'm Carmelo, I'm sitting here. I'm looking. They don't need me to score. That's the problem. They don't mm-hmm. need me to score. So and that's great. You know, it takes a lot of pressure off me. However. If I don't play defense, my starting spot's gone. 
they don't need me to put up 30 points a game. They have George, they have Westbrook, and they have Steven Adams. So if I'm not going to perform well defensively, they'll slot somebody in that will to start. Yeah. And and they'll come have me come and in and be Billy offensive. Billy Donovan will bench him if he – I don't see it happening, but Billy Donovan Mello's is the type gonna, of coach that for, will. Yeah, Melo's going to be forced to face George Carl's type coaching again, something he's not used to anymore. And I think it's really going to force him to step up his his defensive-minded – you know, playing, which we've seen. We've seen Melo play defense. He can do it. All right. We, well, enough, enough, enough. All right. Kyle, I know you are dying to get into some process talking. Well, the Sixers made two minor signings. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard someone make minor sound so major. But, like, they signed Mecca Okafor. You can't. And they signed Chris Humphreys. Non guaranteed deals. Which I know you're a big fan of the Humph. It sounds like a joke, but honestly, they're going to mentor your big men. Like, 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 like I was saying, like I, like I was going to say, I'm sorry. What? Shut up. The chance of them making the teams aren't high because the team's already set. They want to play with, they want to play the young kids. The only person that might make it is maybe Chris Humphreys over Julio Okafor, in my opinion. Amika. No. no. I think Julio's got too they're, much They're both value. Okafors are on the team? Yeah, they're actually. Oh, that's cool. Distant cousins, whatever. I don't care. Are you sure? I thought it was spelled differently. I could be. No, they're so distant cousins. It's red, like three. That's articles. cool. Anyways, that's O Q four. Sports outsider. He knows. But that's true. Omega Oka four, I believe, can teach. Yeah. Embiid and for sure. Oka four and Dario right. and Ben Simmons to how to really develop and I hate get, Dario. Yeah, whatever, and get used to playing in the NBA. You know. What, how to like train your body, and that's that's a big thing in the NBA. Yeah, they're so, not used to it. That's yeah. why Embiid keeps getting hurt. I didn't hurt. know Okafor still played. He did. He was a free agent last yeah, year. I don't he was really, hurt since he yeah, he's been in the league since 2013. Yeah. Wow, I was like, because you you told us about that signing, I was like, he's still playing. He's yeah, trying to make a comeback. I was surprised. By you that. know your fun fact too about Emeka Okafor? Not it has nothing to do with basketball, but he pl- he was one of the few players. He went all four years at UConn, and he graduated. I'm pretty sure it was with like engineering. Really? He gradu- I'm pretty sure he graduated with like a degree in engineering. I'm pretty sure he graduated with like, like a 3.8 GPA. Good for him. Like, that's disgusting. And he plays basketball. And he's a professional basketball player. That's, Good for him. Yeah, sure. So who does that? Toast of excellence. I just believe that. And here we are. Sitting <laughs> around the table talking about him. I so, think um, he could. If he makes a team, he's not going to play. He's just going to be the he's mentor. He's going to be like the Elton Brand. Like, a, was exactly. that last year or a couple years ago? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's so just going to. Teach these young boys. He might get in ball. like garbage minutes or something. Yeah. Send him to the Pelicans. We want him. All right, all right. We got, we got to cut it off. We got, we got our producers screaming at us that you know we. Have, he said we had five minutes left, and then ten minutes later, put up his three minute hand. So he's, he's having a coronary on the other side of the table. I wanted to do two things because I don't really give a crap about his time constraints. Good. Oh, Kyle, and Jeff, you've had some minor experience in the two K world, but you kind of have a general idea of how it works. Kyle, you've played it. I've played it. We'll get Mock and Kendall more involved, their hand-eye coordination subpar. But um, is, I would like to hear an NBA 2K rating you absolutely disagree with. I have a feeling I know what Jeff's might be. Go first. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go Don, first the since, since of neither 2K. of them are prepared. Wasn't Mine prepared is, and this is a shot, and I'm sorry, but it's Joel Embiid. I'm pretty sure Joel Embiid's ranked like an 86, I think it is, which is absolutely absurd for somebody who's been out of college for two years and has only played, what, 30 games? 32. 32 games. That is absurd. You know, I, I read this article about how they do, like, uh, ratings in 2K, and 89 to 91 is, like, on the cusp of being, like, one of the greatest players in the game. So if 89 is that cusp, which is, like, what DeMar DeRozan is rated, and that's still too high for DeRozan because he's not one of the greatest players in the game, for an 86 for somebody who's only played 32 games, he's fantastic. Do not get me wrong. He has potential to be the greatest center in basketball. But look at Andrew Bynum. Like that it's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying he shouldn't be an 86, but they, they got to find a way. It's like the Kevin White factor in Madden. Kevin White has played, I think, like 10 games total in three years. And he's you know he's already out for the rest of the year. But like his, his rating in Madden, they got to do what Madden does. His rating in Madden is like a 74, but his athleticism stats are still high. You know, his route running has suffered because he hasn't played, but you know. He, he still jumps high. He has good hands. He's got good speed. Those things don't go away. That's what they got to do in 2K. And be, you know, his IQ is still there. His rebounding is still there. But, I mean, he can't be an 86. doesn't make any sense. For me, I feel like Damian Lillard's rating is too low. 
The amount of scoring, amount of leadership. Do you know what it is? It's like an 89-90, like in that area. Oh, okay. And But for me, he does way too much for that team to be that low. Brings him to a playoffs almost every year. No. They might not go far, but he never had the supporting cast around him. Jeff, you got someone you like to... I mean, this is going to go biased and non-biased. Biased, it's mellow. Just because I'm biased. Paul already knew who I'm going with, though. Zalonzo Ball's is an 80. Okay, he hasn't stepped on the court yet. He's an 80. Derrick Rose is a 78, coming off a rebound great season. We already talked about him at some point. Former MVP. Was he rookie of the year? Yeah. And... Rookie of the Year MVP skill gonna, challenge winner. You're tell me that injuries alone are going to put him lower than someone that's never played a single NBA game. That's the, that's my gripe against the anger that was tapping the table. I knew I knew Jeff was going to say him, and for the same reason that I said him, he has suffered, but he had such a rebound year last year. He played fantastic, other than his one off the court issue where he decided not to show up for a game. <laughs> he just but, didn't but, appear. But there's no rating for off the court issues, so throw that aside. There should be. It, I, Step I up, two K. But it just it doesn't it doesn't make sense that they they rated him so low. It really bugs me. It also bugs me that Russell Westbrook is rated lower than James Harden. Could you imagine if the new like neighborhood feature you could get into like trouble That'd be off awesome. the court, like gang violence? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Step so up, uh, okay. I see our producer. You know, uh, we don't have any. Fringing. We don't have visuals in the uh, the studio yet. That that'll be a an additive in the future. But our, our producer has written in you know what seems to be chicken scratch handwriting uh, prediction. So. Prediction. Producer, Mr. Kendall Reed, you've been very quiet this whole show. What did you have in mind for our predictions? What did you want us to predict? I thought we would do kind of a too early uh, finals prediction. Okay. okay. All right. Like Machine Washable, do you want to kick us off? Pelicans. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> wow. Burst my eardrums on that. <laughs> Kyle, go ahead. You lead things off. I think it's... I think it's Cavs Warriors. Sorry, go ahead, Kyle. Cavs Warriors. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's Celtics are too weak to compete with the Cavaliers now. We don't watch the reasoning. <laughs> I'm joking. Please, souls, continue. <laughs> Listen, Jeff? I've been quiet. I want to make a joke. Jeff? Well, I'll, I'll go next while Jeff composes. I, I, I made mine earlier. I think it's actually, I think it's the golden the, truth the comes through. I, no, I think it's OKC Cavs. I do. Uh, I told Kyle. I think the the, the East is kind of. It's going to be. It's probably just going to be Celtics Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. And there might be a team that squeaks through, but maybe like the Wizards or the Raptors. But like on paper, it's probably just going to be Celtics, Cavs. Um, in the West, though, I actually think the Spurs take the one seed. I think the Warriors take the two, then OKC, then I think Portland surprises. But I think OKC weasels their way in, beating Golden State and then San Antonio. But then Cleveland takes it all in six. Jeff, I got Golden State going in against the Celtics. But I do think Golden State wins again. In how many games? I don't want to. I don't want to say a sweep. It'd be a sweep if it was the Celtics. It's a sweep. I think it's going to be a sweep, and it. I don't want that to happen. But Rockets, you got Chris Paul. He's going to get hurt. That's my prediction. And the rest of the division is going to be contending. But the Warriors are that good, and I hate to say that. Yeah, no. I hate to say that, but they it, are that good of a team year in and year out. Kyle, uh, you didn't give your prediction for who's going to win and how many games. Cavs winning six. Bold. Really? Bold. It's bold. I, like I hope so. It's tough, you know, producer, you know, relax. It's tough because Golden State is so good, and it's nice because we're finally getting other teams that are that good. You know, you talk people like, oh, well, this has happened. In the 90s, yes, the Bulls were fantastic. But, I mean, there were, like, a lot of other teams that were also really good. They just they just had Jordan. And so, I mean, not that LeBron isn't Jordan caliber. That's not a, an argument I'm saying. But it just kind of seems like there's a large breed of – five-star athletes these days. I, I also think Golden State beats Cleveland. After beating the Pelicans in the Western Conference Finals in yeah. seven games on a bad call. Yeah, the Pelicans are going to take them the distance. The but, Pelicans? But up, I didn't say it like you that. You said Pelicans. Private star. <laughs> huh. No, I do. I think the, the Warriors are going to take on the Cavs again in the finals and beat them in five. All right. All right. That's fair. All right. Well, uh, let's get to uh, Bear Reviews. Machine Washable, would you like to lead us off? I tell you, this Boom Citralaka is fantastic. Yeah. It's you know fantastic. I got, that in, I got that in a package store in Cromwell. It is very good. You it know is... where I found it? It was oh. rolled. Like, it was on its side on the back of the shelf, like, three weeks ago. It, it is really good. And it's cool, because, like, the can looks like the old um, NBA Jam 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explosion kind of yeah. look. All right. Uh, Souls? Oh, it's juicy. Excellent. God, where's that beer from? It's from Double IPA. Cares. <laughs> <laughs> Double IPA, that's right. I like that. Kendall? Very good. Uh, <clears throat> I'm much... Like stouts like Riddler does, uh, something to have in the morning, just like uh, the name Sunday morning. That's, and that's my a private predi- stock. Stop trying to make Jeff Martin jokes. And He's my back. prediction, by the way, is Cavs <laughs> over Houston in six games. Houston, huh? He's so biased. The guy just likes hurricanes. What, what do you mean, what bias? Uh, and I got skipped over on it, so that was my point. But, but private you, stock. You didn't talk at all. I forgot you were even here. You were just giving me hand motions. I'm making sure you guys sound good. It's my job. Shut up. And boy, do we sound good. J Mart, would you like to be review Stev's brew? Stev did a great job. I, I listened to the podcast prior to, and I know the, the IPA. I, I'm going to just repeat what you guys pretty much said. It did not feel like a double IPA, but it hits like a double IPA. Really smooth. I don't like Noggy. No offense. So I have some bad experiences with Nagato. Well, all right. Both with school and other things aside. Personal matters. But. Catfish on her. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> but yeah, no. It was a great beer. Uh, my, <laughs> my, you got my. <laughs> attaboy. <laughs> my main. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> my main brewing beer. Uh, all I could say is. <laughs> Maga's died over there. It's killing me. Um, it's the spin cycle. My oh main, my, my main beer. All I could say is, I could definitely have another one. Excellent. Wait, what? Another one. I'm, I'm sorry. What? what another the one. The success for that beer. <laughs> another one. <laughs> um, no, it was very good. Uh, kind of like it was. It's weird. I hate saying this about beer because like people use this in in the industry and it's terrible. But I'm gonna use it. It, it, it tastes like liquid hops. I don't know how to describe it, but it just, it, it tastes, I don't yeah, just give me the I know what you did there. Um, You're going to kill it. It's the end of the private stock. Yeah, why don't you shut up and suck my dick? Uh, whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> my uh, goodness. This I is believe all... Machine Washable has uh, some social media That's news he'd like to share with you. Hostility. Yes, um, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram Do at Getting Sports With Drunk. Twitter, we're GSWD underscore four. Make sure you, oh God, <laughs> I got a bad burn on that one. <laughs> oh, Jesus, the end of the bottle is always the worst. Make sure to use that hashtag GSWD for all your daily needs, whether it's trusting the process or watching OKC win the finals. Also, be sure to find us on Podbean, subscribe on iTunes, and we're on the Lieb Sports Network every day from 7 to 8 a.m. Mock also has some uh, exciting news that we're going to share with you way too early every single week until it happens to make sure that you don't miss it. Mock? Yes, be sure... To get on Podbean, do it the week of January 29th. We are going to be a featured, put it in your calendars. We're going to be a featured podcast on there. Be sure to check it out. It's like four months away. Hey, do it. You already forgot. I didn't. <laughs> well, from all of us here at Getting Sports with Drunk, I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm Jay Mark. I'm Mark. Sheen uh, Washable. Nope. Yep. I'm Kendall, and I'm the man of many names. <laughs> and keep it juicy, baby. Was.